Hi everyone, we are Gloria Sovernini and Jacob Dazon. We are working at Red Hat. During this talk, me and Jacob will introduce a project that will let you take full advantage of the power of the edge computing. We'd like to give you a way to manage, observe, and the edge workload and the edge devices using your existing Kubernetes environment. This is Project Porta. During this presentation, we'll show you the main feature of the project Quota. We'll show you how to configure your hedge devices, how to deploy containerized workload uh, on the edge device without uh, relying on the uh, Kubernetes scheduler. Project Plotta let us to monitor our hedge devices and uh, let Holta has to uh, get data from them. We can also access the hardware to the hardware that are available on each edge device. I'd like to give you a quick overview of the project Plotta. On the Kubernetes side, the Plotta project is composed by a Plotta operator and the Plotta Edge API. Uh, the Plotta operator is a Kubernetes, Kubernetes operator used to uh, manage the workload of the hedge devices via Kubernetes API. The Plotta operator is also responsible to deploy all the Plotta project custom resource definition, um, such as edge device or hedge workload CR. The Plotta hedge API is an HTTP entry point that handles all the communication between the devices and the cluster. By default, all the devices are connected to the Flutter Hedge API, and they can, in this way, retrieve the necessary configuration, or they can also push some information. In this way, the Hedge devices uh, shouldn't talk directly with the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Flutter let also uh, has to manage uh, your edge devices from a single point using Kubernetes CRD. Uh, for Flutta, an edge device can be almost anything uh, from a Raspberry Pi to a big server or a drone. So let's start with the first demo. Before any edge device can be used with a cluster, it needs to be registered. To facilitate that process, we provided Make file target in our Flutter operator project that generates a script that contains all the necessary information to make your device be visible for our cluster component. So let's have a look how it looks in practice. Here on the left hand side, uh, you can see uh, my repository checked out with the Flutter operator and the make file I mentioned. On the right hand side, I will be monitoring all the edge device CRs registered with our cluster, which correspond to devices registered with the cluster. At the bottom, there is the command prompt on the edge device where I will execute the installation script. That's generated with make agent install scripts target that will generate install agent DNF sh. After the file is transferred to the device, it needs to be executed with additional arguments like uh, IP address uh, of your HTTP API endpoint, Flota API endpoint, and port it listens on. And the installation will take uh, quite some time as we need to install our RPM uh, and dependencies like node exporter, Podman, Ansible, or NF tables. When the installation of those components is complete, the device will automatically restart. And after successful boot, it will register with the control plane. Here you can see the CR listed. Uh, and let's have a look what's inside that CR. Flutter agent, when uh, it's registered, it sends some information about hardware configuration of the device. Like in this case, you can see labels describing the architecture of the CPU uh, and other. Uh, in the status part of the CR, you also can see hardware information. Flutter has a notion of edge device sets, which are supposed to logically group devices serving the same purpose and by that sharing the same configuration. So that configuration can be defined at the level of a device set 
and the device set can be assigned to multiple edge devices. Whenever a configuration is specified at the level of edge device set, it is applied to all devices belonging to that set, and whatever is configured at the level of that device is overridden with configuration coming from the edge device set. Conversely, whenever device is removed from a device set, the configuration encountered at the edge device CR would be applied. For example, we have edge device set named demo set, which defines configuration for metrics. In this case, we set system metrics gathering interval to 60 seconds, and at the same time we disable it. If we want to apply that configuration to an edge device, we need to label it with flota slash member of label with the value corresponding to the name of the edge device set we want the device to belong to. Like in this case, uh, we put demo dash set value to the label and the device would belong to demo dash set edge device set. Let's have a look how a common configuration can be applied to a group of devices using device set. I've got three edge devices connected to my cluster and at the bottom you can see the respective configurations on the devices. Uh, when I apply changes to configurations, those listings will change. I've got definition of a device set called demo-set. The, the name is important because we need to make an association between device and device set. The creation of the device set doesn't change anything because there is no connection between an end of the device and that device set. To make that connection, we need to apply flota slash member of label equal to the name of the device that we want to apply. The labels were applied and the configuration changes on the devices. If we remove the label from one of the devices, uh, it will revert its configure on device configuration to whatever is specified at the level of edge device in the cluster. If you remove the device set, uh, the configuration will be reverted on all of the devices and they will go back to their default configuration. In Flota workload, software you want to run on your edge devices needs to be wrapped as a container image. And we use Podman to execute your images on your devices. So you can provide information, what you want to run, how it should be configured on the device, using standard Kubernetes pod specification that is embedded into our custom resource describing your workload. And because our workloads are described with YAML, uh, you can use your standard CI CD pipelines that you use to deploy your workloads in cluster to deploy that on the edge. What is important to note is that workloads in Flota are not scheduled by Kubernetes scheduler, they are scheduled by Flutter operator using labels. So based on label selector and labels that are put on devices and workloads, we decide where the workload needs to be executed. Like in this case, we have edge workload manifest where you can see device selector that matches profile label to be equal HTTP and it matches against edge device CR. In this case, if there is a label profile equals HTTP, the workload on the left-hand side, HTTP Nginx, would be deployed to that device. During this demo, I will show you how to deploy Nginx ATP server to uh, devices connected to the cluster. Uh, here you can see those three devices and manifest for the edge workload representing nginx server uh, in which uh, we expect the workload to be deployed to any device having profile equals http label uh, also in the pod uh, definition uh, we have the nginx image and 8080 host port should be opened for set workload uh, after applying the workload, we would expect uh, the workloads to be shown in the status uh, at the bottom screen, but they aren't because the devices are not labeled yet. After lab labeling the devices, uh, the status of the workloads are shown. 
uh, and they will transition from deploying to created to running in some time. Now, all the workloads are running and we can try to connect to Nginx server on one of them. Uh, we will use links and port 8080 and we expect default Nginx website to be shown, which is there. Uh, we can try another device and the result should be exactly the same. The same default Nginx website and it works. If we unlabel device, the workload will be removed from said device. And uh, when we try to connect to it, we only will see error. Uh, and we can expect the same behavior when you remove the edge workload CRs. Uh, the connection will report error. Now we know what an edge device is, how to deploy a workload, but would it be useful to um, retrieve some information from the edge device? Uh, Flutter gives us a simple and effective way to uh, monitor metrics locally in the device and to export them periodically to a remote server. The metrics collected will be then saved on a time series DB like Thanos. Each edge device can collect metrics from all the deployed workloads or from the um, system of the device itself. Um, metrics are collected by a Prometheus node exporter, so the available metrics are the same as those of Prometheus node exporter. It is possible to configure metrics collection. Uh, first of all, the metrics collection is enabled, enabled by default, so we can for sure uh, change the collection frequency or uh, define a subset of um, metrics to be collected using allow list. Uh, it is also possible to disable completely the metrics collection, and in this case all the infrastructure related to uh, metrics acquisition will be turned off, included Prometheus node export. So let's start to configuring uh, our uh, metrics collection. This can be done, uh, including uh, included um, subsection in the edge devices UR. So uh, in the green box, there is the uh, metric section, and we define the interval of acquisition equals to 30 seconds. The default is 60. We can also disable metrics. Uh, easy to do, just hide in the edge config CR the tag disabled through inside the sec metrics section. We can also configure the allow list. Uh, so uh, if we want to monitor just a subset of among all the available uh, metrics, we can just create, first of all, a config map and name only the metrics we are interested in, and then refer to this com config map inside the edge uh, device CR, <laughs> including an um, allow list subsection uh, in the spec. And if you want, we want to restore the configuration to the default, um, it's super easy. We just need to remove the metrics subsection in the edge device CR. Uh, so, Project Flutter assumes that the device can be of any type and they can, found, can be found anywhere on the earth. So, that's why Project doesn't assume that the devices are always connected. If they are battery powered, the battery could die, uh, the connection quality may be poor, or maybe there is no connectivity at all. So, let's see what happened in action in the next demo. In this demo, we will see what happens when devices have connection problems. We observe our cluster from a Grafana dashboard. We can monitor the number of Flutter objects, head devices and edge pro clothes, and the devices that have registered. At this time, only one device has registered. I have to warn you, in this demo, the clock is ticking faster. In fact, two more devices are already registered. Let's move to another dashboard to understand more. We immediately see that all the devices are no longer connected to Flutter. 
let's assume that the connection quality is really poor. The device are not sending any more information to plot the project, but device one managed to reconnect. Unfortunately, it loses connection again, but device two managed to connect. In this demo, we are lucky. Within a few moments, first device two, then device three, and finally device one succeeding in reconnecting successfully. Another feature of the nearby uh, project Lorca is to run Ansible playbook on the device. First, uh, we need to uh, define an edge config CR. An edge config CR allows to specify some configuration, so potentially not only Ansible playbooks, uh, to apply to the device. Uh, we also need to assign a label to the edge device in the uh, CR and to specify uh, on, on which device we want to run the Ansible playbook. So to be honest, um, there is things are a little bit like more complicated than under the hood. Uh, so once the plot operator receives the hedge config CR, so in this case hedge config one, uh, it generates for each device with a corresponding label a new uh, CR called playbook execution. This CR allows uh, us to link each uh, Ansible playbook execution to a device and to monitor its states. In this example, we create uh, the edge config, naming edge config one, and we assign uh, the label, the corresponding label to device one and device three. Plot operators then create two playbook execution CR, one for the device one and one for the device three. Now, the Ansible playbook execution can begin. The device will then update the status of the execution. In this example, device 1 successfully completed the execution, while device 3 had some problem. But let's see how it works on the project portal. During this demo, we will execute our first Ansible playbook on the device. First, we need to define the Ansible playbook. So let's start with a simple one that just aim to create a LOTXD file on the device. Then we should define the uh, edge config CR. So we name it at edge config demo one. And then and now we should set the content. Let's encode the demo playbook, copy and paste the value on the content field. We could also set some other fields, such as the execution timeout in seconds. Now, on the left, there is the Ansible the device, and since the Ansible playbook aims to create an LOTXT file, I'm checking that I'm not cheating. Let's start to uh, monitor the uh, edge configs available in the uh, in the cluster, then the playbook execution, and finally the status uh, of the uh, edge device, uh, especially the one related to the playbook execution. We need to add a label to the edge device to link the edge device one with the edge config. Last thing is to send the edge config. In a moment, the status of the playbook will change from deploying to executed. In the meanwhile, let's see that the playbook execution has been created to link the edge device one to the edge config demo one. The status has changed into successfully completed. So let's check the file. Here it is. And look at the content. Flutter can facilitate data transfer from your edge device. 
like in this case shown on the diagram, there is some workload running on the device and it creates some files, be it picture files, some statistics, or maybe it produces some data models based on some inputs uh, for the workload. Then uh, user wants to have those files available in some central location that's uh, available for further processing. Uh, in this case, in case of Flota, we use S3 API as the target uh, endpoint that is used to upload the files. It doesn't have to be AWS uh, S3 bucket, it can be any service providing S3 API. Whenever files uh, are created in a specified directory on the edge device, Flutter agent detects that and uploads them into the remote endpoint. To configure that behavior, uh, user needs to provide data section of this uh, edge workload specification. Like in this case, uh, we have source directory uh, listed, which corresponds to in container export slash source directory. So it is a subdirectory of uh, export directory that is visible in all of the workloads run with Flutter. In case of that specific configuration, it boils down to slash export. Target defines the directory in the remote uh, bucket where the files should be placed. In this case, it's snapshot. So the path to the files uploaded from the device is bucket slash snapshots. To instruct Flutter agent how to access the remote storage, a uh, user needs to provide storage uh, section of the edge device manifest, where there is S3 dedicated configuration, which um, references config map with information about the bucket and secret, which provides credentials to access said bucket. Like here, uh, on the left hand side, you can see config map listing different parameters of the bucket or the endpoint where you want to upload the files. And on the right hand side, you can see the AWS credentials that should be used for accessing the remote storage. The other functionality that Flutter provides is access to on host devices. Like in case of that manifest, there is a dev video zero device available on the host machine and we want to make it available for the workload running on that machine. In this case, we map that dev video zero path to exactly the same path inside the container running the workload. This way, user will have access to that on-host device to, for example, take photos or record videos. To make things simpler, uh, we instruct uh, Flutter to run the, uh, the container in privileged mode. For the purpose of this presentation, I have prepared Python HTTP server listening on 8080 port and whenever get request is made to that server, a photo is taken using a camera attached to the device running the workload. The photograph is stored in the export directory on the device. The whole script is wrapped in a fairly simple Docker image, as you can see on the screen. Let me show you how all of that works in practice with a Raspberry Pi deployment. I connected my Raspberry Pi to the cluster and uh, let me show you how its descriptor look like. Uh, you should see that we have already different architecture, ARC64, report as reported by the agent, and I label the device for scheduling with app snapshots label. I also configured S3 storage by referring config map and secret with uh, bucket information credentials. The config map looks as follows. We have the bucket host name, port and region defined. And in case of the secret, you can see the credentials. Let's see the uh, workload that we're gonna use. And there's the app snapshots uh, label for scheduling. And uh, the container in the pod uses uh, dev video device to take pictures and said the video file is mapped from the host device the video zero uh, the workload exposes 8080 port on the device to allow users to trigger snapshot taken and the snapshots will be uploaded from uh, target directory to um, snapshots 
uh, subdirectory on the S3 bucket. After the workload is deployed, it should shortly transition into running state. It is now, so uh, we should be able to call its 8080 port and trigger photos taken. We'll take several photos, and while we do that, they, their names will gradually be listed on the lower left pane. Which issue uh, LS on our bucket. There we go, the first two files and another set of files should pop up shortly. There we have five files and in total we should have six files right now. Uh, let's download several of those files and see what they look like. They should show uh, the Raspberry Pi that is used for this demo. Let's see the first image. That's the Raspberry Pi I mentioned. Second image should also show the same device, but this time with some visitor from the future. And the third device. Great Scott, it works. Today we've shown you how to connect Linux device with a Kubernetes cluster using Project Flota and features it has to offer, like configuration of a fleet of devices using device sets, workload deployment to a Flota managed device with the Edge Workload CR, how to get insights into your device and workloads performance with metrics, support for Ansible to introduce changes to a Flota managed device system, how to upload data from devices to a central location. And finally, how to use host devices in your Flutter workloads. To learn more about Flutter, visit our GitHub organization and website. On the website, you will find documentation and how-to guides for all the features demonstrated today and more. Thank you very much.